What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Ant217 and I love video games. Um, one of my favorite video games in the world has to be Pac-Man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, well, I, I do love Pac-Man, but one of my favorite games ever is The Last of Us. I love The Last of Us since they made the first game even before they remastered it a hundred times and re-released it. Um, and ever since I played the game, I was always thinking that they need to make this into a movie. And I sort of got my wish. They made it into an amazing HBO series. And I love the series almost as much as I love the game. I realized something. The Last of Us is one of my favorite games and I've never done a fan art of The Last of Us. So today, I do a fan art of The Last of Us. Let's get started. So to begin, I start with my sketch. I already have Ellie sketched out and now I'm working on Joel's sketch. And I wanted to capture some of the characteristics of the actors. I think I captured Bella Ramsey in my sketch, but for Joel, I think he looks more like the video game Joel with a little bit of mix of the show, but I am happy with the way that the sketch came out. One thing for Joel's pose is I wanted him to be looking toward her, but also protecting her, kind of standing in front of her. And I wanted to show that he is holding that rifle that he has when he was teaching Ellie how to shoot. I felt like that was a very important scene, so I kind of wanted to portray that scene just a little bit. It kind of shows their first time bonding in the show, I feel like. And it was such a small little scene, but it was so powerful just to see that um, he's starting to care for this child that he didn't care for before. So as you can see, I'm starting to sketch Ellie's arm and she's holding the book. And I don't have a reference for that, a reference image that is. So I use myself as a reference. I hold up a book and I look at my hands, as you can see here, and I draw what I see from life. If you can't find a reference photo that you like, then you can just take your own reference photos or just get into those poses yourself and just draw what you see. So I use my own hand and I hold my own book and I draw what I see. Speaking, Speaking of my own book, I published a book. It's a kid's book called Cooper Makes a Wish. That's me. So if you want to support my book, it is now available on Amazon. Just search up Cooper Makes a Wish and the link will be in the description. But wait, there's more. I also published another book, When a Monster Wants a Cookie. If you want to support me and you want to support my art, just grab my book and I thank you so much. Both books help teach kids about friendship and the importance of sharing. And I know you want your kids to learn these great morals and some of you need to learn. So grab my book and back to the video. While I'm sketching, I'm still thinking about the, um, the composition of my piece. I, so do I want them on a mountain? Do I want them in the street or, you know, in the sky? Speaking of the streets, I know they're not called zombies in the show, they're called infected, but I got a question. What street do zombies live on? I don't know, but I bet it's a dead end. <laughs> Ellie loves puns, so she would have laughed at that. Uh, I draw a quick scene and I get straight to the inks. I ink in Ellie, and I know Ellie in the show, and I believe in the, in the game, it's been a while since I played, um, she has this thing dangling from her backpack. I don't know what it was, so I turned it into a like keychain or something of a clicker's head because why not, right? Then I move on to inking Joel. Um, one thing I want to point out is that you should always flip your canvas throughout the whole thing. Um, it helps you notice errors. I notice an error here with um, the side of his face, which I do fix toward the end of the video. As I'm drawing this, I'm thinking about how cool they look and how ready they are to um, be in this apocalypse. And I noticed something. I know Bella Ramsey from other series like Game of Thrones, which technically I guess is not an apocalyptic world, but there are zombies in that and there's giants and there's all these creatures and seems very post-apocalyptic, you know. 
What is it about her that they want to throw her in post-apocalyptic worlds? What is it about her that you feel like she can survive a post-apocalyptic world? Which she can, obviously. Me? I don't think I'll make it. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not gonna make it. I mean, to be honest, I feel like the safest place to hide in a zombie apocalypse is the living room. <laughs> living room? Because they're not gonna be there because they're undead. <laughs> So I get back to the drawing and I'm just dropping in the base colors for both characters before I work on the background. I like to do the scenery before I start rendering because it helps show where the light is coming from, if they're gonna be in shadow, depending if I draw something next to them or something like that. It just helps you with the rendering process. I always feel like you should draw the background first. So I start with making grass and then I wanna make the scene a little bit more eerie and for me, I feel like a, a nice sunset is perfect for post-apocalyptic. I don't know why, I just picture that orange thing as danger. I don't know. And now I want to point out one thing, guys. I cheated. I am a cheater. I took the buildings in this drawing from another drawing. I didn't end up using the buildings in the old drawing. I took them out and drew a mountain. I took the buildings out of here and I put them into our scene. And now if you know me and you know my work, uh, you know I don't like drawing buildings. Uh, I don't think I'm very good at it, but mostly because I don't try to do it. Um, you have to be too precise, too geometric, and it's just, I find it so tedious. But I'm going to give you a nice trick that I do to put buildings in my background. Um, first, I drop in the flat colors, and then I use a soft brush, not too soft though. A soft brush that's not too soft. From, in my case, I am using Clip Studio, and I'm using the soft airbrush and turning up the hardness to 100. And I put a multiply layer on top of the flat colors and just paint over the flat colors in different areas. I feel like it helps look like I actually put effort into this building. And also it works perfectly for this scene because it's post-apocalyptic. It's supposed to look like dirty and grungy. And then I add some cracks on the building because again, post-apocalyptic. And then after that, don't forget to add the obvious shadows under ledges or on the other side of the building where the sun is not hitting. And there you go. You have your building. Before, after. Before, after. Looks great. Moving on. And on to my favorite part. It's finally up to the rendering. It's where the image finally pops. I start by rendering Ellie. I use a more painterly look for the skin and then I use a more graphic, more cell shaded look for the jacket and the clothes. I add a couple of layers of rendering and then I move on to rendering Joel. Now rendering Joel was a lot of fun for me because I did something that I haven't done in quite some time and I feel like I should do it more. I feel like this can make your art jump to the next level. Adding textures. If when you add textures it makes your art pop, it makes it look more professional. You professional over here. You can find texture packs online. You can take photos and create your own texture packs and your own texture library. And yeah, you get some great textures that way. So I get this texture of wood, put the texture over the gun, making a clipping mask so that it doesn't go around everything else. Or you can just select the around where you don't want it to be and press delete. Um, bring down the opacity and go to a overlay layer style. And there you have it. A awesome looking texture for the wooden part of the gun. And you didn't even have to do much. 
but in some cases you have to do a little bit more. I added texture to Ellie's jacket. I used this red texture that I found online and I put it over her jacket, do an overlay layer style and it turns the jacket red. That's wrong, Ellie's jacket is not red. So I have to do one more thing. I gotta go into the color balance and change the hue to a more green color. Now I'm almost coming down to the wire here and I felt like something was missing. How am I gonna do the Last of Us fan art without drawing an infected creature in the background? So what better creature to draw than to draw a clicker? Now, once again, I start with my sketch, go over it with my inks, and I love the way this clicker is coming out. I didn't think I was gonna like it. I wasn't even sure if I was gonna keep it, but I do like it. I also take free stock images of mushrooms and put them behind him just to add some more mushrooms and more of that fungus look. Add some more texturing with the grunge brushes all over the piece because they're gonna be dirty. They're gonna be full of blood, especially the clicker around his arms and hands and mouth. There's gonna be blood and some grunge. I add grunge all over the piece. Finally, without further ado, here is my finished piece of The Last of Us. That is my Last of Us artwork. I hope you like it. I like the way it came out. I love the clicker. I kind of wish the clicker was closer to the foreground just because I love the way it came out. But I do love this piece and I love the game and I love the show. I can't wait to see what they do with it next. They already confirmed that they're gonna be working on other seasons of the show and I can't wait for it. I can't wait for, I'm all for it. Can't wait for it to come back. Let me know if you watched the show. Let me know if you played the game. Let me know which one you liked more, if you hated them, loved them. Um, if you're excited to see what happens next, let me know if you like my drawing. Hit like, subscribe, and remember, I'm awesome. I think. Thanks for watching.